Hello, hello, and welcome to this Man in the Fail 21 YouTube video. My name is Josh Bayou, bro, and here today we're going to discuss how to stop this powerful Browns running game with Nick Chubb, and they can also use Kareem Hunt. The Browns are a the team that wants to run the football right down your throat and then use play at you with Baker Mayfield to throw it to Odell Beckham Jr. and those talented wide receivers with Jarvis Landry as well. So I'm going to show you how to defend against the run, stop the run, and then be able to get after Baker Mayfield and get the ball back for your offense to score on the Browns defense. Remember to subscribe to the channel so you can see more amazing videos and this information you cannot get anywhere else from yours truly, Josh Bayou Bro. Also share with your friends so that they can subscribe as well. As I say, y'all make the channel. So I need y'all to subscribe to it, share with your friends so that they can spread the word. Also, push the notifications button so that you can be notified when a new Man NFL 21 video just like this one appears on the channel. So we're about to face the Cleveland Browns and they're gonna get the ball first. And here we go, kicking off from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland. The Browns get the ball, get to them, get to them. There you go. So we got them down right at the 25 yard line. And that's where they're gonna start. able to complete that to, to David Njoku, their big tight end. That was that was well covered. He was just able to throw the ball to the outside and he's a big tight end so he was just able to really box out the defender there. Man, we just gotta make the, yeah, we just have to make the tackle. I mean, that's two missed tackles right there. It's just so important to make the tackle on these big, strong uh, tight ends. Otherwise, they just break them and just go to the house. Like, that really should be just a 15-yard game. But instead, he breaks both tackles, able to get to the end zone, so it's seven to nothing. And so we're going to get it out to the 35-yard line, and that's where we're going to start for the day. We're going to start with the running play. That's going to be a three-yard gain, so it's going to be second and seven. Beautiful throw to the outside of Mike Gesicki. You really, you know, you could throw a lob pass. That's what I did. I threw a lob pass to the tight end because he was wide open on the outside. I just had to have a little bit of touch on it. You have to have touch on your throws. Everything doesn't have to be a, a hard ball, a fastball as they call it. You got to have some touch on your throw. So it's going to be second and 10 now. We're gonna go with we we'll go with this play. Come on, let's go! White Nazi! White Nazi! And that's to Antonio Brown for the first down, so just throw to the outside and just give him a chance to run under it. That's exactly what we do. So now we're going to go with this play. And that's a touchdown to Darren Fells. Really, he was double covered. But I just say, you know what? He's a big tight end. Let me just let him outbox the defender and just run under it, which is what he did for the touchdown. So now it's all tied here in Cleveland. Which is, by the way, host of the NFL draft. Uh, they had their first round yesterday in Cleveland, Ohio. And of course, as you know, Trevor Lawrence went one to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you had Zach Wilson go two to the New York Jets. 
To me, guys, I was surprised with Trey Lance going number three to the San Francisco 49ers. You know, all throughout the last few months, you've been hearing about Mac Jones. But it's what I said uh, to people when talking about the number three pick. When you go up to number three, you don't go, you don't go up to get a statue quarterback like Mac Jones. Mac Jones is a talented quarterback. But if you're going up to number three, you have to get a game-changing quarterback. And that's what Trey Lance from North Dakota State is. He's like most of these quarterbacks we see nowadays in the NFL with Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. You got to be able to move out of the pocket and elude defenders who are coming after him. As great as Mac Jones is accuracy-wise, his limited mobility does it. It is a problem in today's NFL. It's not that pocket passers can't play in today's NFL, but I favor more of a more of a quarterback that can get out of the pocket and that can make moves in terms of getting rushing yards, improving your improving your offense. Because if you have a pocket passer quarterback, you're really limited in what you can do. No one's gonna respect play action. If, if they don't feel like that quarterback can't get yards just running it. And that's the problem with Mac Jones. Is that Mac Jones, he got selected by New England. I think that's a great selection because New England can use him the correct way. And I think that him and Bill Belichick, he knows Mac Jones is very accurate. And with Cam Newton last year for New England, he just wasn't very accurate with the football when he came back from COVID. In week, in week five against Denver. He just wasn't the same quarterback. So I think Bill wants someone like Mac Jones, but to just think that this guy is going to play week one, I think is, a, to me it's a reach because I think they still want Cam Newton to be the week one starter. But, but Mac Jones went the correct pick at number 15. And San Francisco with Trey Lance, we're going to see just how good a Kyle Shanahan hit is in terms of coaching up quarterbacks because Trey Lance still has a lot of development to go. Remember, Trey Lance only started 17 games this past season. at uh, 17 games throughout his career because last season he only played one game due to the pandemic for North, for North Dakota State. But that season, back in 2019, he had zero interceptions. You can't say that about any quarterback coming out of this draft class. Come on, let's go. That's what makes Trey Lance so amazing. So at the end of this first quarter, it's seven all here in Cleveland. And so now we're going to run the football. But it was just great to see the draft again, you know, at a city. You know, last year having the virtual draft, it was different. It just wasn't the same. You didn't get the bear hugs from the players to Roger Goodell. So it was just cool seeing the draft last night back in an NFL city. That's intercepted. I just threw to the wrong guy. I should have thrown to Austin Eckler on the flat route, but I threw it deep to the tight end, and Denzel Ward was able to pick it up. And so that's going to be a seven-yard game by Nick Chubb. That's what I say. You have to get Nick Chubb down because he can break tackles and take it to the house. He may not have the home run speed like Kareem Hunt, his uh, backfield mate, but he is plenty fast enough. You see, just look at that. He's able to outrun our defense. Like I said, Nick Chubb is 200 and uh, 40 pounds, you wouldn't think a 240 pound running back would be able to do that. But that's, he has that, he's he's not fast, but he's speedy. You know, he's quick out of short spaces. That's what makes him such a good running back. All right, here we go. 319, 319, 
And there you go. That's what you. That's what we have to do. You have to get up the middle pressure on Baker Mayfield. He does not like pressure up the middle. The tackle, seven yards, that's now third and 15, and now we're gonna go to the two minute warning. Well, actually, no, there is no two minute warning. We just keep going. So now, it's third down and 15. Here we go now, green 39, green 39. This is a big down here for us to get the ball back. So we are unable David and Joe threw in so they get the first down. So the drive continues. Hurry up, here we go. Blue 90. Blue 90. Huh. And, that, and that's just Odell Beckham. That's just main strength right there because, you know, the corner slay, he tackled him, but Odell just did a nice job of just breaking through the tackle and being able break the plane to the end zone. So it's going to be 14 to 7 Cleveland. That's why I say you have to stop the run because when you don't, then they're able to throw the football off of that because you're scared of the run. So play action works when you're able to run the football like that. You can only really play action will only works when you're able to run the football the way that Cleveland does with Nick Chubb. That's a big time throw to Darren Fells. Like I said, he was double covered, but I just know that he's going to come up with the football. Here we go. Brad 38. Brad 38. And that's incomplete. So now it's second down and 10. And that's a big time catch by Mike Basicki, so another first down, and the drive continues. Here we go! And that's going to be a catch by Antonio Brown, so that's a nine yard gain. That's another big time catch by Mike Gesicki. So now we're first and goal at the two. Come on, let's go. One, nine. One, nine. And now it's going to be second and goal. So now we have third and goal with 11 seconds left. And to be honest, we're just going to pound it. And now it's a touchdown with Austin Eckler. So we're able to answer their touchdown drive before halftime. And so far, this has been a high scoring game as it's 14 all here in Cleveland. Also, the news of Aaron Rodgers possibly leaving Green Bay came out yesterday. Here are my thoughts on that, guys. With Green Bay, Green Bay wants to keep him now because, of course, he was league MVP last year, and Rodgers had a great season. He betted on himself, and he was able to have a really big-time season last year to get to the NFC Championship game, of course, lose to Tom Brady. My thoughts on that is... They want him now, but Aaron Rodgers is saying, if you really wanted me, you would have not picked Jordan Love last year in the first round. And so when they did that, they should have known that this could happen with, with Aaron in terms of this offseason. And Aaron Rodgers is just expediting the future to now. And G Green Bay to me now, Y'all know how stubborn these GMs are. They're not just going to trade a quarterback 
when they just say, I want out. But Green Bay made the mistake by getting Jordan Love. So it's only app that now you go and you just say, okay, well, let's just trade this guy because Aaron Rodgers is not going to play for the Green Bay Packers. I'm sorry to say this, Packers fans, but he is not going to play for you this season. Aaron Rodgers is content with life. He's in a good place in his life right now. He has no reason to come back and play for the Green Bay Packers this season. And that's why when he told members of the organization and members and players that he's not coming back, they should take him at his word. Aaron Rodgers is not going to come back this season and play for the Green Bay Packers. He wants to go somewhere else and win championships. I put it like this. Aaron Rodgers does not want to be like Drew Brees. Drew Brees has had a great career. All of his stats are top two in terms of passing yards, touchdowns, the whole get-go. He's had a great career. But the one thing Let's we go. will say about Drew Brees is that he only had one Super Bowl. In these last four years, the Saints had a great chance of, of, get, of giving him more Super Bowls. They weren't able to get the job done. Aaron Rodgers does not want to become have a Drew Brees type career. Like I said, it's a Hall of Fame career. But Drew Brees, the one thing he would be lamenting is, man, I wasn't able to get another Super Bowl. That's what Aaron Rodgers wants. He literally just saw Tom Brady last offseason leave New England, go to Tampa Bay, and then in the very next season, win the Super Bowl, beat Drew Brees, beat him, and then beat Patrick Mahomes. Aaron is saying, I cannot stay in this anymore. I have to force my way out because I want to win championships. And so that's why, and I'm not mad at him. Player empowerment is becoming the new thing in this NFL. For so long, these GMs just wanted to take control and just say, no, we're going we're gonna to trade you. We're going to cut you when we want to. No, these players are saying, we are going, we are going to be in control of how our careers go. And when we want to leave, we will tell you, we will dictate where we want to go and how this is going to happen. And so with Aaron Rodgers, I just think he's taking control of what is going on right now because he knows with the Green Bay Packers, they're not winning a championship this season. I'm sorry to tell you this, Packers fans, but it's the truth. You're not winning a championship this season with this team. This, this same team has been to two straight NFC championship games, and nothing has happened. Y'all are not winning a championship this season. So Aaron Rodgers is saying, let me go somewhere else and look to win more championships. Two teams I would just give you right off the bat as teams that should go after Aaron Rodgers. Really, any team that's quarterback needy should go after him. But two teams in my mind that are win-now teams, the Patriots and the Saints. Now, of course, the Patriots got Matt Jones. So the Patriots may not want Aaron Rodgers. And, and they still have Cam Newton. The Saints, though, don't really have a starting quarterback. Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston are going to duke it out, but they don't have a starter. So you could see the Saints get after Aaron Rodgers. Now, the problem that the Saints will have is the Packers don't want to trade him in the NFC. They probably want to trade him outside of the NFC to the AFC. But if you can make the offer tantalizing for Green Bay, the Saints possibly could get Aaron Rodgers. And for my money, the Saints need that type of elite quarterback if they want to win more Super Bowls. And Sean Payne, I think, knows that. That's why he said, yeah, earlier this offseason, Taysom and Jameis would be the right choices, but we don't know how the rest of this offseason is going to go. Little did he know that Aaron Rodgers would drop and he fumbled the point at we fumbled the field goal, so now they're gonna get the ball back. But little did we know, little did he know that Aaron Rodgers would drop a bomb a few hours before the draft. But that's just what happens in the NFL nowadays. I said this was gonna be the craziest offseason ever, and that's exactly what it's been with all this quarterback movement. Get a one 
Johnson to Odell Beckham Jr. So now we have to do a good job right now of stopping the Cleveland Browns. We had a chance to get the lead going into the fourth. And now this is a tightly contested game. And so they're going to throw inside to, to uh, Njoku. Actually, that's Rashard Higgins, the wide receiver. And so we're going to go to the end of the third quarter. We'll see if they do another play here. And they're going to get a four-yard gain. So we're going to go to the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth. It's 14-all here in Cleveland. And so that's going to be a two-yard completion to Nick Chubb, and it's now going to be third and four. So this is a critical third down and four right here. That's incomplete. Great job by the safety. Harrison Smith back there. So now it's fourth and four. And they're going to go for the field goal. If they're not able to get this, we get great field position. Miss it, miss it, miss it. And we go. So it's no good. So now we get the ball back with 235 left. Let's see, play action. Yeah, we'll do a play action pass here. And so that's going to be a first down by Will Fuller. And in this situation, we could just start to use the clock because we are in control now. Getting close to the red zone and really getting close to field goal range. That's a five-yard gain by Austin Eckler. And we can take this to the two-minute warning. So it's 14-all here in Cleveland. They missed the field goal, and now we are in prime position to take the lead. And that's another first down. So the drive continues. And now they're going to have to start calling timeouts because if they don't, then I'll just drain the clock out and just be in position to take a field goal. But they haven't done it yet, so it's second and nine, so I could just keep burning the clock right now. So now it's going to be third and seven. So that's a two-yard game. Now they call a timeout. So now it's third and seven. And like I said, we don't have to pass the football in this situation. And that's going to be a five-yard game, and they're going to call a timeout. Kick is good. So we're now up by three. So with 1.14 to go, we are now up by three and in position to win. But we still have to stop them from scoring. And so now our defense is tasked with getting the stop. going to be a first down so I think that yeah the clock is going to stop in this situation Here we go now. Green 39. Green 39. and so now they're going to and, man, and that's just how big Nick Chubb is but you see the safety love Harrison Smith they're bringing the noise to Nick Chubb he, he got through the first defender but Harrison Smith brought his chin strap and was able to smack him down to the ground. So now it's second and eight. Here we go now. Blue lady. Blue lady. And 
so now that's going to be completed to David Njoku, so it's going to be a first down, so the drive is going to continue. That's going to be another completed pass to Njoku. So we have to do a good job now of not letting them get into field goal range. Here we go, get to him, get to him. Oh my goodness. I am so glad we got him down. But now, this is where we need to hold them to a field goal. And we were not able to guard Jarvis Landry. So now it is 20 to 17 and they lead here in Cleveland. So we pretty much need a touchdown to win this game. And that's why I said we just had to do a good job of just holding them to a field goal. And so we got over midfield, so we're in good position right now. Let's see what play we want to do here. It's a big time throw to Darren Fells. So now we can call a timeout in this situation and stop the clock. Here we go. And that's incomplete. So with 12 seconds left, we know what we need. question is, will we be able to get it? And that's intercepted. I, and I didn't want to throw to Antonio Brown, but I did it. The interception's made, and they're going to win this game. So it was a back-and-forth game. But they were able to make the plays late. We had a chance, and I threw the interception. So now this game is over as they're going to win 21 to 17. So hard for game, really battled against these guys. But like I said, they are a tough football team to beat when they're able to run the football. And today they actually passed it for a lot of yards with Baker Mayfield and these receivers. But like I said, they're talented with Jarvis Landry and Odell Beckham Jr. So we weren't able to contain them and they were able to get the game winning touchdown in the last few seconds. So now we're going to go back to the startup page. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching this Madden NFL 21 YouTube video. My name is Josh Bayou, bro. Remember, subscribe to the channel so that you see more amazing videos like this one. Also, share with your friends so that they can subscribe as well. I want... I want y'all to spread the word about this great channel. You can't get this content anywhere else on how to play Madden in the NFL 21 and also us discuss some of the big storylines around the NFL. Also post comments on what you liked about the video and what you want me to talk about next. Well, that's all I have for now. Until next time, Madden NFL 21 fans, this is Josh Bayou Bro signing off. Bye.